Hey everyone, this is Arsalan Cockrell with End Times Bible Hope. I am glad to be back making the second installment of this series on the seven trumpets. Today we're going to be covering the second trumpet. Before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. This helps in sharing this message so others can see it. So, we're going to be talking about the second trumpet of Revelation today. And we're just going to jump right in and read this and get started. And we're going to go through it verse by verse and we're going to let the bible tell us exactly what the second trumpet is rather than interpose and interject um what we may believe or perhaps what we 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 want to come to scripture and let scripture tell us rather than have our own presuppositions you know influence how we may see scripture so let's jump right in and the second angel sounded and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea and the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. Now there is a very important principle when we are looking at these trumpets because results of one trumpet actually leads to another trumpet. And we're gonna see that as we study this. If you watch, if you haven't seen the first video, the first trumpet, go back and watch that. That was about the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans because it's pivotal to understand the second trumpet. We have to understand the first. So there's this important principle in scripture and that is if we go to Galatians, it says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And we see this because what, what the Romans did to Jerusalem in 70 AD, we're going to see comes full circle around on them in the second trumpet. And the imagery that's being drawn from in the second trumpet is actually speaking about Babylon. And we're going to get to that in a minute. So God uses Babylon to destroy his people, to, to overtake Jerusalem. We talked about this in the first trumpet. And then we're going to see, notice what scripture says. And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, my servant. And the beasts of the field have I given him also to serve him. And all nations shall, shall serve him, and his son, and his son's son, until the very time of his land come. And then many, many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. So God uses Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon to overtake his people because of the apostasy that had come in. But now watch what God does in these next scriptures. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. As Babylon has caused the slain of Israel to fall, so at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. Now, these are important uh, prophetic, uh, important principles we're going to see through Scripture. Because one thing happened, now God is going to... Uh, you know, basically distribute a retributive judgment because while God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to come in and destroy Babylon, um, it was his permissive will that that happened because of their apostasy, but now God is going to punish Babylon for what they did. So we see here God used Babylon to overtake Jerusalem, and now God is going to punish Babylon. Now, when we get to the second trumpet, notice how the imagery we were talking about, a, a burning mountain was thrown into the sea. And Revelation 18 picks up on this, and it's talking about Babylon. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. Now Revelation is drawing from imagery of the Old Testament. So anytime we need to understand Revelation, we have to go back to the Old Testament and look at the contextual clues to tell us. And if we go to Jeremiah, Jeremiah speaks about the same thing of literal Babylon. And notice how he describes it. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, speaking of Babylon, which destroyest all the earth. I will stretch out mine hand upon thee and roll thee down from the rocks and will make thee a burnt mountain. The sea has come upon Babylon. She is covered with the multitude of the waves thereof. And it shall be, when thou hast made an end of reading this book, thou shalt bind a stone to it, and shalt cast it into the midst of the Euphrates. And thou shalt say, Thus shall Babylon sink. Notice how Revelation draws from this imagery that Jeremiah describes in talking about Babylon, a burning mountain being thrown into the sea and sinking, just like in the second trumpet. 
Now, a mountain in Scripture is a kingdom, and we find in several places, but in Revelation 19 it says, And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth, and there are seven kings. So these seven mountains represent seven kingdoms throughout time, and it's really important that we understand what happened when uh, the Medo-Persians overtook literal Babylon. The Babylonian Magi at that time, they fleed Babylon and they went to Asia Minor. And it's in Asia Minor where Rome kind of grew up and Rome adopted a lot of the, the, the tradition and the religion from the Babylonian Magi. So when we get to the New Testament, Peter speaks about Rome as being the new Babylon. And it's because there was this intermingling, commingling of of religion between the Babylonians and the, and the Romans. Notice what Peter says. The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus my son. So here we have Peter, he's in Rome, and he is calling Rome Babylon. So the New Testament writers saw Rome as the new Babylon. So in Revelation, when John is describing this burning mountain and he's drawing imagery from Babylon, well, he already knows that they are speaking of Rome as the new Babylon. And we need to interpret scripture this way also because he was writing from that perspective. So how was Rome thrown into the sea? And, and, it, and you know, like it said, it waved and how was this burning mountain thrown into the sea and sunk? Well. Uh, around the year late 300 AD, early 4th century, barbarian tribes came in and they carved up Rome from the inside out. And they were left with several of these barbarian tribes. There was 10 of them, the Alemanni, Anglo-Saxons, the Burgundians, the Franks, the Heruli, the Lombards, the Ostrogoths, the Suevi, the Vandals, the Visigoths. These came in and carved up Rome. Rome, if you remember, uh, under Nero had persecuted many Christians also numerous uh, Ignatius and then also Polycarp. So they had persecuted many Christians and Jews and people. And this was God's judgment now falling upon them for the destruction of Jerusalem and also for the destruction of his people. So this great burning mountain, a, a nation, a kingdom being thrown into the sea. And we're going to see exactly what those symbols mean. Notice what the sea and the waters represent. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes, and nations, and tongues. And notice what Habakkuk and even uh, Jesus says, And make us men as the fishes of the sea, as the creeping things that have no ruler over them. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. So here we have a great burning mountain, which is Rome, being thrown into the sea, and the sea represents a multitude of peoples, nations, tongues, and Jesus says, I will make you fishers of men. So the things that are in the sea are people. And the people die when this mountain comes crashing into the sea. Many people perished when these barbarian tribes came in to carve up Rome. It was a, it was, you know, it's a significant event in history. Uh, now, what do the ships mean? Well, uh, in Ezekiel, Ezekiel tells us, Say to Tyre, you who are situated at the entrance of the sea, merchant of the people on many close coastlands, thus saith the Lord God, Tarshish was your merchant, because of your many luxury goods. They gave you silver, iron, tin, and lead for your goods. The ships of Tarshish were carriers of your merchandise. You were filled and very glorious in the midst of the seas. So we see from this verse that ships represents an economy, trading, goods. So in summary, what do we have in this second trumpet? We have a burning mountain, a nation, a kingdom, Rome, being thrown into the sea, the sea representing peoples, multitudes, nations, tongues. In the sea we have not fish, we have people, fishers of men, Jesus said. So this nation comes crashing down through the barbarian invasion People die throughout this experience, and the economy of Rome is decimated. Trading, goods, all of it is decimated. That is the second trumpet. And why? It came about as a result of the first trumpet, because Rome had 
destroyed Jerusalem, martyred God's people, martyred several of the early church fathers. And this was God's judgment, because whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. Friends, I hope this has been a, a blessing for you, and I look forward to doing the, the third trumpet very shortly. This is, these are super exciting, and to see it through this lens is really a blessing. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Until next time, friends. Thanks.